morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever is appropriate for the time of day you're watching. Welcome to the show. Yes, it was a strong look and it's a look we'll take a little bit more of a detailed look at towards the end of the video. But this video will chronicle all of the ridiculous challenges that I've taken on in the last few years. Yeah, so apparently around this time every year I decide I get an itch that needs scratching, some kind of challenge that needs doing. I'll take you through the last four or five years as to where that all came from and to how we ended up with today. So in 2016, I decided, of course, the best idea in the world would be to walk from Northampton to Birmingham. At the time, sat navs weren't particularly as useful on the phones. Uh, so I made an AA route planner and decided I'd take my phone with me and use it if I absolutely needed to because of the battery life of the phone at the time was not great. Needless to say, the walk between Northampton and Birmingham is roughly 46 miles and at the time I barely even touched even maybe a quarter of that. So after about a month and a half maybe of uh, some long term treadmill walking, I did attempt the walk and surprise surprise I got about 31 miles in which is pretty fair distance anyway and found that I could no longer continue because I trod in some kind of like badger hill and gone over end of the walk. That walk at the time I would actually raise some money for Safe and Sound Derby. They're a charity that look after children who are in danger um, from all sorts of things. At the time it was a specific focus on the sexual exploitation of the young people. So it was a bit of a I can do a ridiculous challenge on one hand whilst raising some money for a smaller charity that does a lot of good within the community. So hand in hand worked okay. Not long after that a good friend of mine's five-year-old proceeded to break my ankle. It's not quite as cut and dry as that. We were having a lightsaber fight. He was getting a little bit over exuberant and was definitely winning. And I stepped backwards and again, trod in some kind of like badger or mole hill and went over on my ankle, snap and done. Um, the hospital, however, didn't agree. They didn't diagnose it as a broken ankle until four weeks after the actual incident. So that was great. It was also around this time that a very good friend of mine and a huge supporter of this channel, Victoria Stevenson, shout out to you. Yeah, she decided that she would incite the competitive beast within me and tell me that if I entered a half marathon I wouldn't finish it. Of course the problem with that is I am the most competitive beast on the planet and therefore took that as a taunt and fell for the taunt massively. So I entered into the next year's half marathon. Now I definitely did train for this a little bit but definitely not as much as I should have done. There's a little bit of a theme coming for this as we go through them I think. So yeah I ended up doing this half marathon in about, I think it was two hours 24, which for a first half marathon, not bad at all. Considering I'd only really had about maybe a dozen runs before then, maybe maybe up to 15, um, I was okay with that. But the problem is once you start doing these races, you get a little bit of a bug. As you can see from behind me, um, I, I do like a bib and a medal and t shirt The next year was the big one. The next year was the year that I got encouraged to enter the London Marathon and I didn't get in on the ballot and I remember thinking oh, I kind of hope I don't get in, I kind of hope I don't get in and then when I didn't get in I was actually really disappointed. So I looked through the charity places and looked at what they were kind of asking for. Some of them asked for a huge amount of money um, that they want you to raise within the course of your, your training and the actual race itself. There's one charity that I ended up running for, which is the best for right here, uh, the National Deaf Children's Society, um, who, to their credit, weren't asking for the huge amount of sums of money that um, some of the charities were. So I opted for them and then set out trying to raise the £1,800 that they'd asked for in the seven, eight months or so between accepting the place and the marathon itself. All sorts of things were done in that time, just general generosity from friends and family. Um, I had raffles, I had a donation jar at the bar I worked in, but the big event was on St Patrick's Day 2018 uh, where I decided it would be a really good idea to have a public waxing. Now you guys will probably be able to tell from the little that you have seen of me on YouTube uh, that I'm a very hairy human being. I bought a hundred packets of wax strips, each packet contained seven strips and we didn't have enough. Yeah, I'm gonna flash a photo up now of the end result of me the next day. As you can see, there's a couple of things missing from my face. The thing was, I was about 200, 300 pounds short of my target by March, and obviously that's only a month before the actual marathon itself in the, the last week of April. 
and a friend of mine who had already donated, I think about a hundred pounds towards my total already said, if I had my eyebrows done, he doubled the pot of whatever we'd raised that night. And that night we had several things like um, incredibly hot chilies. There was the waxing itself, which was a, a donate per strip that people did. So I'd already raised a few hundred pounds from that night already. And this guy said he'd double it if, if I had my eyebrows taken off. And he said, just start with one. So stupidly, I said yes to one. Off it went. And then I couldn't exactly just walk around with one eyebrow, could I? So I remember saying, just do the other one, get it out of the way. The problem was from that day onwards was that people looked at me as if something was wrong, but they couldn't figure out what it was. And to be honest, I don't blame them. The actual marathon itself, I'm going to do a separate video about that later on in the journey uh, to cover just the ins and outs of how that day works and how it was for me. And if I ever think I, that I would recommend it to anyone else, but that'll be a separate video. After that though, I was in quite a lot of pain. Uh, my back and my knees weren't okay for a few months really. So there weren't many challenges left for the rest of the year. I then went away to work abroad for six, seven months across uh, eight or nine different countries. And it got me out of a routine. I wasn't running, I was eating poorly, um, being very well looked after, but it meant that I put on quite a lot of weight. So naturally, when I came back from that, the first thing I did was enter a 5K, 10K and half marathon weekend. Stupid decision. I thought to myself, it's about time since I had a challenge, let's, let's do one. So the 5K was at nine o'clock in the morning on the Saturday. The 10K was at five o'clock that evening, on the same Saturday, and then the half marathon was at nine o'clock the Sunday morning. Needless to say, by the end of it, I was walking around like a cross between John Wayne and a cardboard cutout. It wasn't an attractive look. It really did highlight to me as well just how far I'd gone since the what had been my kind of adult physical fitness peak when I was running the marathon. And so I kind of said to myself, I'm going to sort this out. I didn't for a number of months, but we are getting there now. And that brings us to today. So firstly, the big challenge for me was to shift a lot of weight. To you, it might not seem like a big deal. You know, some people live with uh, being overweight their entire lives. Some people are comfortable, you know, being happy in the body you're in. For me, not okay. I need to be active out there doing something. And I didn't like getting to the top of the stairs and feeling out of breath. So I lost, at the moment, a stone in 10 pounds, which is pretty good. I've still got probably about another stone to go till I'm happy, but it's on the right way. And what better way for me than to try and prove to myself that I can still do some of these active events than by completing a marathon next month. It's gonna be really hard. And this week has already proved to me just how much work I've got to do and just how hard it will be come the 4th of October. But with a little bit of effort, and I think the major thing here to remember is it just needs to be a lot of willpower. I think we got this. So I kind of asked you now, do you think that I can do this? Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think I'm taking on too much? Am I just an idiot? Please do let me know. And until the next video, please do check out my channel, have a look at the other videos I got there and make sure you click that all important subscribe button. That would be amazing. If I can bump up these subscriptions through the next few weeks, that'd be great. Until the next video though, ta-ra, take care, bye-bye.